All right, here we go. I said in our last video, I was going to do a like original driver release comparison to a modern driver release on an older graphics card to see whether or not you should be updating your graphics drivers. I think it's something a lot of people tend to forget about. Oh, also too, people tend to forget about the fact that we have merch. So shameless plug, it's up here right now. Our melting connector shirt's obviously very popular because of the fact that the melting connectors are also very popular. Anyway, all right, enough of that. Let's move on. CableMod is proud to announce our new 90 degree 12 volt high power replacement cable sets. Designed to eliminate tight bends on your GPU, the C-Series cables feature standard and reverse 90 degree connectors right on your cable and terminate to standard PCIe plugs designed for your specific GPU. Available in most popular PSU styles, the C-Series cables offer peace of mind with the highest warranty policy in the industry. To see the supported list of PSUs and full warranty policy, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so this is the NVIDIA website right here. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to get the old, old original drivers if you're curious about testing um, like original launch drivers to versus what's out now, because that's what we did. I took the 3070 Founders Edition and we compared the 551.23 to 551.52 compared to 551.61 because of some reports that 5.52 was gimping performance. And then of course, anytime a driver, which it's not uncommon to have a driver underperform or have some bug introduced that causes underperforming GPUs to lead to conversations of planned obsolescence. And planned obsolescence just means the product is designed to only be relevant for a certain amount of time, kind of forcing you into purchasing a newer product in the future to make sure that you're always buying product from that particular brand. Um, I think people could argue that planned obsolescence exists in every single product because no product is designed to last forever. So that being said, um, Drivers tends to be the main point of contention when people talk about planned obsolescence. So let's talk, let's talk about how to get the very, very old driver for your graphics card if you wanna test this. So because we used the 3070, um, I ended up clicking down here where it says beta and older drivers. Cause let me show you right now. If I, if I come here and I go, let's do 40 series, no, sorry, 30 series. And I say, I want a 3070, which is what we got. And we're running Windows 11. Sure, and we search for drivers. But then that's only the most recent driver. So if you want to see the older drivers, you click on beta and older drivers and we can choose our graphics card again. So let's go down to 30 series, let's say 3070, Windows 11. Now DCH is the Windows like, where it's like a Windows app for the driver when it comes to the control panel and it's built into the driver. So it's, it operates more like a Windows app. You'll notice if I select that, the oldest driver we get right here is going to go back to August 22nd, 23, which is not that long ago. And that's 537.13. So obviously that's not that old. I mean, it's old enough, but it's not that old. However, if we come over here and go to standard, which is just the standalone drivers that have the, the old school right click on desktop to go to NVIDIA control panel. Then if we search for that, we get the old boys. Now we go all the way back to July 19th, 2021 and a 471.41. So that's what we tested. That was the first Wickle uh, driver or Windows um, like qualified driver where um, that was like the very first one that came out with the graphics card. So that's what we tested. And then I compared it to the numbers that we already did uh, for the dot five two or the dot two three versus dot five two versus dot six one. So we're gonna have four drivers on these charts to take a look at. So this video is not gonna take very long. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. Um, the very first test right here is Port Royal. That's a ray tracing test. You can see there's actually a greater than margin of error improvement on this driver. Now this is something I have said over, like especially in my last video where it's kind of the opposite story where people try and say, as drivers go on, Nvidia intends, like tries to turn the knob slowly down on the graphics card to make it look like it's performing worse over time. But instead, in my experience, and most people's experience that I've talked to, especially those that have a entire walls full of graphics cards where they can go and do testing and really compare those numbers, have always seen drivers have given slight improvements over time, which is completely the opposite of the planned obsolescence to driver discussion. So the 3070 FE at 471.41 and 82.28, versus the lowest, which is at an 8308, then an 8319, and a uh, 8341. So we saw an improvement every single driver of these four. Now, of course, Port Royal is a, is a very unique scenario where it's designed to show very, very small differences in a number. So if you move on to rasterization, the same thing, greater than margin of error. 
The most recent driver of 551.23 gives us a score of 67.04 versus the launch driver 471.41 almost two years ago, 65.88. So uh, about 150 points of improvement, somewhere around there. My math is terrible, 130 points somewhere. Again, now we're talking greater than margin of error. So like what I said with these three tests here, the 67.04, the 66.90, and the 66.72, those three were within margin of error. But there's too big of a difference down here for it to be margin anymore. Now, it's not necessarily a tangible improvement that you're really going to notice, you know, 100 extra points, but it's there. It's kind of like dyno, putting a car on a, on a dyno. You may not be able to feel 15 horsepower difference, but if it shows up on a dyno, there's 15 horsepower difference. Moving on to actual games, though, check this out. Borderlands 3. So the newest driver gives us a 551.61, which is a 2 FPS improvement over the launch driver of 86 FPS. 2 FPS, not really gonna notice it, but you're gonna notice a trend as we go through these charts. Cyberpunk, no RT. Well, you'll notice a big fat zero. The reason for that gets us into the main meat and discussion of why you should update your drivers is certain games absolutely require a driver update to run. Otherwise, the driver can't make sense of the game or the engine or really know how to tell the graphics card how to handle that title. So even though we have we were attempting to do a no RT, the title won't launch. If the title won't launch because of the driver, we can't get a result. Therefore, that's a big fat fail. So that means if you were running on an older graphics card on an old driver with a brand new title that comes out, this is why when new games launch, especially AAA titles, there's always a driver to accompany it from the major studios like Nvidia and AMD and Intel. Now, all three of those brands will send engineers to those developers to make sure that there's a driver ready for day one. Sometimes drivers are more ready than others. So certain titles can also see a huge improvement in performance. Borderlands 3, for example, um, I kind of wish I had the original numbers here, but Borderlands 3 saw something like 40% FPS improvement uh, on newer drivers versus launch on like 2000 series cards and up because of the fact that it was very AMD optimized kind of by design, politics exists in this space, which really sucks. Then the NVIDIA drivers finally caught up and we saw huge improvements, like 100 FPS improvements on like 4080s and 4090s and 3080s and 3090s when the driver finally caught up. Shadow of the Tomb Raider though, again, a four FPS improvement. Now we saw right here, remember I said I love Shadow of the Tomb Raider because as an older title, it's just, a, it's just a good sanity check because it gives us very consistent, very, very consistent results. We had no change on any of the three drivers, but we came up four FPS from the original launch driver. Now, four FPS is nothing to like write home about. In fact, most people would, would never even notice it at this FPS range. But if you can gain any performance whatsoever, and the thing is with the, with the lower overall average, I don't have 0.1 and 0, or 0.1 and 0.1% lows on here, or 1% lows and 0.1% lows on here. Um, if I did, you'd probably notice those came up with the new driver. Uh, but anyway, four FPS, downloading a driver, giving you better improvements, or better performance at all is a good thing. Same thing when we turn on RT. Again, only two FPS improvement, but still something there. Uh, check this out, Forza Horizon 5, 99, 99, 99, but up from 94, so five more FPS. One thing I do wanna point out though is Forza Horizon 5 is kind of an example like Cyberpunk, whereas instead of Cyberpunk saying it was unable to initialize, Forza Horizon 5 did give a warning saying, hey, your driver is out of date. In fact, the number one reason most people would notice any sort of performance loss over time, and especially a small incremental performance loss, which sometimes people like to attribute to age of the card and driver maturity, or in this case, planned obsolescence, is because of the fact that their, their pace may be drying out, or their fans might be clogging up with dust, or the heat sink is clogging up with dust. And people forget that thermal paste has a shelf life, both in the tube and in the card. And every time you heat up a graphics card and you get it hot, you get that paste phase changing. As that paste phase changes, it will be more liquidy and then as it cold, gets cold, it's more solid, liquidy, solid, liquidy, solid. And then what happens over time is every time it gets liquidy, it can start to um, squish out of the dye and create a moat around your dye and it's no longer doing its job, which is to fill all of the peaks and valleys in a microscopic level between your cooler and your dye to transfer heat. If it can't transfer heat, the dye starts to run much hotter than it's designed to, and people tend to forget that there is a megahertz curve 
with temperature. So as temp goes up, frequency comes down. And with the frequency coming down, comes down voltage, which is designed to just keep the card from killing itself. So over the course of five, six, seven, ten 10 years, that slowly gets worse and worse and worse. In fact, we even did a video recently where I took Phil's old GTX 980 uh, and we did some testing and stuff on it and it didn't, nothing initially looked like it was really out of whack. Like the performance wasn't great. We weren't really getting much boost clocks and the temperature was like 84C, which doesn't seem that abnormal considering how hot graphics cards are today. But then when we took the cooler apart, as you can see right here, it was like completely non-existent on the die, completely squished out, and so we were getting overheating conditions. As soon as I replaced the thermal paste, put it back together, cleaned out the heat sink, we dropped almost 20C, like down into the 60s for the graphics card temperature. High 60s, low 70s, which gave us 200 and some odd megahertz additional boost and a very tangible performance increase that was noticeable by just doing nothing but cleaning our graphics, our graphics card and our cooler. So anyway, I want to make this video because I asked in the last one if you guys wanted me to make a launch driver versus like drivers years later to see whether or not we had any sort of serious improvement. Now on something like the GTX 980, the most recent driver that we ran it on, which is the most recent, which was I think at the time the 551.52, um, we could have probably gotten that card and ran back to the original driver, which is I think at this point, it's like the 300s or 200s when it comes to the driver numbering. But if we can see an improvement in, at all on something only one generation old, like a 3070, then you can see the importance of making sure that you keep your driver up to date. So I think it's probably, maybe not every single driver launch, but I think it's probably every few months worthwhile to maybe try a driver. As you can see, you can go back and get an older driver if something wasn't right or there's a bug introduced or you just feel like maybe the placebo pill of something's not right with the driver. And you can always roll back your driver, use DDU or display driver uninstaller and roll back to a different driver and then be as if nothing had ever happened. So anyway, there you go, guys. Um, and this kind of ends our series on drivers this week, but I think it's a, an easy place for people to forget. You might be leaving performance on the table and a lot of bugs and weird issues in games could be caused by the fact that you're just running an out of date driver and the game's not even warning you that the driver isn't optimized for that game. So it's worth checking out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something today. Subscribe if you're new around here. Share this video with someone that you know might be having some driver issues or maybe they're just arguing, I never want to update my drivers because they said never to do that. I think they're confusing BIOS with drivers. But anyway, moving on. Um, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.